there'll be no surprise to you, Minister, that this is around accommodation. And firstly, I'd like to focus on the issue of on-campus accommodation, uh, because it's unimaginable that students are still left wondering whether publicly funded institutions will give them refunds for accommodation they are now prevented from using. Students secured accommodation based on assurances from inside government and institutes of higher education. Minister, students under, understandably feel that they have been misled. Some colleges have indicated that they would be giving refunds, which I, I welcome. I believe Cork, Maynooth and NUIG have said that they would. Others have indicated that they won't. Can you update us on which universities you have officially contacted regarding this and what response you have received? Mother. And Minister, I, I just need to ask you this, Minister, because since I put in the question, we have moved to level five. What does level five mean for students and can students uh, not ex uh, expect accommodation refunds? Because my understanding is that most students are now prevented from using the accommodation that they have paid for. Um, I'm very conscious of the challenges faced by students regarding student accommodation this year due to both financial pressures and the blended learning format of the 2020-2021 academic year, which Deputy Conway Walsh rightly refers to. Responding to these issues is a significant matter of concern for myself and for my colleague, the Minister for Housing, Local Government and Heritage. And we are examining how accommodation providers can be encouraged to show greater flexibility to students during this challenging time. The Deputy will be aware that the university sector is already engaging with these issues and indeed she's acknowledged that following the decision to minimise on-site teaching, five of the seven universities have now confirmed that students who do not wish to proceed with their booking and university-owned student accommodation can cancel it without charge and those who opt to leave their accommodation will receive refunds. I'm awaiting confirmation of the policies in the remaining two, Trinity College and DCU, but I've made it very clear in meetings with the representative bodies of our universities and our institutes of technology in the presence of representatives of our students um, that the position of government is that university-owned uh, accommodation refunds should be provided. I am aware that DCU has adopted a flexible model where students can book and pay for accommodation for a number of days and nights rather than a full semester, which seems uh, an intelligent way to do it. I also understand at DCU where a student paid a, pa paid a deposit but chose not to take up that accommodation, they will have the deposit refunded in full. I'll continue to liaise with the sector through the Irish Universities Association to encourage the availability of fair solutions to students in university-owned student accommodation. For students in the private rental market, I'm urging providers to be flexible in finding solutions, given the circumstances that students find themselves in. There are no, as the Deputy will be aware, powers directly available to me under the current legal framework in relation to private accommodation. Refund or cancellation policies in student accommodation should be set out in the licence agreement signed at the beginning of the academic year, and in the first instance, the student should engage with their accommodation provider to try and reach an agreement. I have asked my department, however, to continue to engage with the Department of Housing, Local Government and Heritage to monitor and report to me on developments and further actions that could be taken. Uh, thank you, Minister. And I do welcome the fact that five out of seven have said that they will do the refunds. It's important that those refunds are done in a timely way. And I would urge you to, um, to, to get a commitment uh, from Trinity and from DCU in relation to that. I think it would go some way towards reassuring students. But third level students have suffered from a great deal of uncertainty, as you know, around their education. And while some of the uncertainty is unavoidable, increasingly the students I have engaged with feel that much of the uncertainty they're faced, uh, that they faced was um, avoidable. They feel that your department has over-promised and that timetables weren't issued until accommodation had been paid for. I've been advising students since July not to pay for accommodation up front. Um, one way we can begin to provide that certainty is in the area of accommodation and the fine, acknowledge the financial stress it's causing. But will you commit that all colleges and associated accommodation providers will be instructed by your department to provide full refunds for any student's request of unused accommodation? That's what we want to get at. I think we need to get it off the table once and for all, Minister, that you're going to say that all campus um, accommodation will be refunded and when it will be refunded and that they communicate in an accurate and honest and truthful way with students to let them know. 
student, I want a university owned accommodation to be refunded where students can't use the accommodation or at least fair solutions to be found. I've said that in crystal clear language on a number of occasions to representative bodies. I've also said it in the presence of, of USI. It is my position, it is a position of government and I do expect that to be swift. I welcome the progress that has been made. I accept there's more that needs to be done. I want to take the deputy up though on her offer to outline to the house what does level five mean for students and mean for universities because I think that is important. As you know, level five measures designate higher and further education as essential insofar as on-site presence is required and such educational activities cannot be held remotely. So this is not March. We're not locking the doors of our universities as we did then. In overall terms, all further and higher education institutions should continue to deliver the vast majority of classes online. We all recognise that. But reflecting the scale, diversity and variety of third level provision, higher and further education institutions are best to determine where on-site presence is required. And my department has been engaging with unions, student reps and, and university leaders in, in this regard. So very, very briefly, Cahirlach, teaching and research in laboratories, practical and skill-based tuition, <laughs> workshops including training of apprenticeships, engagement including small groups of learners where learners might be vulnerable or might require additional support, scheduled access to libraries, which I think is very important for our students. These are the sort of things that can continue on site, on site but the clear public health advice is that most should be done online. Morgan, Arla, Arla. So, uh, Minister, are you saying that students who are on campus at the moment that your advice to them is to stay on campus within the bubbles that they're working in? I want to put it on record, Minister, I am deeply concerned about the quality of the education experience that uh, students are undergoing at the moment. And I don't want us to run into a situation where we're going months down the line and we find that there's huge dropout rates and the mental health and the physical health and the impact of that, that that's having in, in students. I really think that we need to take a grip of it now and we need to acknowledge that there's a problem there. We know the problems there is with online learning as it is, but there are, um, the education that we know from, the, from research that we have done, the education experience that students are having right now is deeply worrying and we need to face up to it and we need to deal with it and we need to support those students collectively in that. Uh, I agree with the Deputy that we do need to, particularly when it comes to things like mental health and well-being, we need to be really aware of these things. We need to support them. We need to invest more in them. That's what we're doing. But I also hope she'll agree with me that we need to learn from the mistakes other jurisdictions have made where lots and lots of students returned to on-site uh, campus and we saw what happened we saw what happened in terms of outbreaks of the virus and the likes we need to be very careful we need to put their safety their health the health and safety of staff students and communities first i know that's what students are saying they've been extraordinarily responsible and helpful contrary to the stereotypes that you and i hear from time to time the, the usi campaign has been very helpful they've worked with the chief medical officer Students asked me for certainty. Universities, lecturers, staff there asked for certainty. We now do have certainty in terms of what this semester looks like. It's not what we'd like it to look like. And I fully accept your challenge that we now have to make sure, and I've put this up to the universities. We've put a lot of extra money into mental health. You'd argue we should do more, I take that point. But I wanna make sure that our students can continue to access that, even if it's remotely. Things like mental health, things like the Student Assistance Fund, they're now much better resourced than they were. But we need to make sure if a student is remotely you know, as at home, that they can still access that support and our colleges need to reach out. In that Morgan, 